This is the oldest version of Minecraft. Well, to be specific, it's the oldest version that you can actually play in. But this is what's known as pre-classic or when it was called cave game. And as you can see, there's not really a lot to do here. <laughs> it's a big barren wasteland. The only thing you do have is the ability to place and destroy cobblestone blocks. So my idea was that we would start in the earliest version of Minecraft and make our way up through each major update in the game where they release new blocks or new things that I can use to build with and gradually build and transform a house. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Perfect. <laughs> I mean, it's not anything special, obviously. You don't even get a door, you get no windows, nothing. Obviously, I can I can make a window like that, but it, there's no windows. So this is our little house. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to upgrade to the latest released version of this pre-classic Minecraft and use what assets are available to be able to build something a little bit more like a house. So this is the final released version that they have of pre-classic Minecraft. And as you can see, there's a few little changes. We actually have a cursor or a, a crosshair in this one. <laughs> which we didn't have in the last one. And we have the ability to change blocks, which we also didn't have the ability to do before. You can also respawn randomly in the world, or you can spawn a, a bunch of Steves. <laughs> Either way, this is our house that we just made. I'm going to upgrade what we've currently got into something that's a little bit more substantial, something a little bit more like an actual house. So another thing to add that in this pre-version to destroy a block is actually right click and to place a block, it's left click, which is the opposite of what it usually is. <laughs> so it's a little bit confusing confusing to get your head around. Honestly, it's nothing special, <laughs> but really it's all that I could come up with. <laughs> anyway, this is my little house. What do you think? <laughs> and there's no door, there's no interior, there's no windows. <laughs> it's just a bit of a shell. But that's what this game was back then. It was so early in development that they were just testing stuff. Enjoy your house, Steve's because now we're gonna upgrade to the next version. Okay, we are now in the classic version of Minecraft. And obviously things look a little bit different. And because I've gone from pre-classic to regular classic, I've had to rebuild things and start again. Hence why I didn't really make the biggest, most insane building possible because that would have just been a massive pain to rebuild. <laughs> but either way, I've rebuilt it. And as you can see, we've got a bunch of new blocks as well. So I'm gonna do the same as I did before and I'm gonna upgrade it with the new set of blocks that we've got. We've got brick, We've got glass, we've got log, we've got loads of new materials. And so let's see what we can come up with. All right, so this is the updated house we've made for classic. And as you can see, we've got a few new blocks here. I actually built this little pedestal here because obviously I can't fly. <laughs> so the house looks a little bit different. Okay, actually it looks completely different. But I mean, aside from that, <laughs> I have tried to incorporate a lot of the new blocks into the build and kind of see what we can come up with. Now, honestly, building this was so infuriating <laughs> for some reason whenever I right click to place blocks or left click to destroy blocks sometimes instead of placing just one block it would place two or delete two as well as you just saw there so it doesn't happen all the time it happens randomly but it was happening a lot more towards the end when I was doing the roof so it's very frustrating inside we've got another new block we've got wool so I've used gray carpet down here we've got a few little support beams some stairs leading up to the next level nothing fancy just something to demonstrate what you could do this early on in the game. Evidently, not a lot. <laughs> so now we're going to take this classic build of a house and it's time to upgrade to the next update. So moving on, as you can see, we are in Minecraft Inf Dev. Now, this was the first update, I believe, where they implemented survival, which is why I've got hearts down below for health. I've got an empty hotbar and I have an inventory space. Now, obviously, things aren't as simple as they are nowadays with updating worlds, as you saw in the previous version I had to manually rebuild the entire house and for this version I decided I'm not going to do that instead we're going to skip it <laughs> because realistically there's no point in me rebuilding the house and doing all of this especially in survival because it's going to take just that much longer so let's go into the next update and see what new blocks we can also include in the build so it's a different day but we're back and I've finished building the updated house in the beta version and this is what we've done so it looks a fair bit different <laughs> Yes, we've changed a lot from the previous version, the one that we built in Classic, but we've got loads more new blocks to work with here, as well as I actually have the ability to fly, which makes things a lot easier. In fact, in this beta version, there's a lot more things you can do. You can fly, you can actually crouch towards the edge of a block, which you couldn't do in the previous version. So yeah, obviously, there's been a lot of changes. If you look at the house here as well, you can see that a lot of things have changed. It's been upscaled slightly, but I've tried to keep the base foundations the same. 
Anyway, let's run through the things that we've added using this update of the game. In the previous version, we really didn't have a lot to work with. We had a few simple blocks and that was it. Now we have this catalog of loads of new blocks to work with. And as you can see, it makes my life a lot easier and I'm able to add a lot more detail into the house. We've got doors. We didn't have doors previously. We've got trap doors. We've got stairs. We've got slabs. In fact, even in these chimneys alone, I'm using new stairs, new stone brick, new trap doors, new iron bars and obsidian. So yeah, a lot of changes, a lot more details, and overall, a much better build. As you can see, things are starting to kind of progress into this gothic-style fantasy mansion, and I've kind of gone for that wear and tear look, trying to use the cracked and mossy stone brick, and so to enhance that, I've also added a bunch of vines and leaves creeping up the side of the building. It is kind of crazy just to see the leap in how much stuff they've added from the previous version to this version. Well, mind you, the previous version was actually alpha, but even so, they still didn't really add a huge amount of block in the alpha stage. So of course, I'll show you the inside as well. Nothing too fancy, but I thought I'd do a simple little interior. So we've got a little grand staircase here. We actually have gates and fences. The thing is with these fences and gates actually is you can't just place them normally. You have to put a full block underneath before you can place them. And another thing that I just tried to do in this early version is you can't middle click to select any blocks. Sometimes you can, but most of the time you can't. <laughs> anyway, enough dawdling. It's time to move on to the next version of the game. Now, to be fair, this update doesn't really offer a lot of new blocks, so not a lot has really changed. But I am very quickly going to run you through the changes that we've made. So as you can see on my hotbar, these are the new additions. We've got mycelium, we've got lily pads, which I've included by doing a little pond down here. Nothing special, but I just wanted something to feature them and showcase them a little bit. Of course, the other notable change here is the chimney. I haven't actually changed the design at all. I've literally just swapped out the bricks for the nether bricks, and I've used a cauldron and a brewing stand atop the chimney stack. More of the actual changes to take place inside. We've got this spiral staircase that leads up to the top of the tower and at the very top we come to a little room a dim little room mind you it's just a little addition to use some of the new blocks okay now that that's done it's time to upgrade to 1.2 in 1.2 we were greeted by a few key blocks so when incorporating them into the build i decided to swap out the gray wall that was here previously and replaced it with some new jungle logs and some chiseled stone brick we've also got a few new features here at the front door we've got chiseled stone brick down here and some redstone lamps and then for interior we've added an entire another level and as you can see we've got a few varying wood colors in this version there still aren't any variations of slabs or stairs so we're still using the regular oak for the stairs themselves but we do now have a few different color variants for wood which we can use to help expand the build even further anyway quick little update done it's time to move on to the next version in 1.3, we can finally place stairs upside down, meaning you're now actually able to pull off some normal looking roofs. There still isn't the addition of a corner stair, but now that we're able to actually place a stair upside down, it leads to a whole load of new possibilities. Along with that, you're also able to now place slabs on the top side of a block, and you also have the ability to put logs in different facing directions. So with all these new additions, we've done a little bit of tweaking and cleaned up the interior to make it look a little bit nicer. Anyway, let's see what's next on our agenda. With 1.4, we've made a few slight additions to the exterior of the house, but the majority of it has been retweaking a few things. I've made a few subtle changes to the little gazebo design down here, most notably the new addition of the cobblestone wall. Also, as of literally the last update, we now have the corner stairs. We now have anvils, so I've lined the roof with them. As well as stone buttons, we now also have wooden buttons, which I've lined the door with, and we have item frames. So I think it's time to move on. So we've got a new expansion. We've made things a little bit bigger. I've basically just mirrored over this section of the house to the other side. And with the new blocks such as quartz and hoppers, I've included them throughout the build to make things a little bit more interesting. As for the inside, I've literally just mirrored the same thing all throughout. So we've got a wider and bigger space to work with than previously, but that just about does it for this update. In 1.6, we had the addition of horses and hay bales. So next to the mansion, I whipped up this quick little stable here, trying to keep it in the same sort of theme as the building. Obviously, I didn't do brickwork, but instead I used log to make a frame for the building and then mimicked a similar roof style to go on top. Of course, we've got all the horses in here. They've each got little pens. And yeah, so I wasn't really planning on making a separate building entirely but it is where it is and this update is revolving around horses primarily so with that done though it's time to move on to 1.7 and this is the big update because we can now finally use mods now we're in 1.7 we can make use of some mods specifically the replay mod since this is an earlier version of the mod it's not very stable and it's not compatible with optifine meaning i can't use shaders at this stage in the build having a few mods at my disposal now i use world edit to reshape and terraform the landscape creating individual plinths for the buildings from the previous version. 
I now also have the ability to copy and paste sections of the build and expand the project more extensively. I spent a long time figuring out how I wanted to design and expand the build, bearing in mind and trying to incorporate the new blocks I have at my disposal in each new version. I began by extending the middle section of the roof into a tower and carving out a circle to embed a stained glass window. Unfortunately, due to the instability of this version of the replay mod, the next piece of footage was corrupt, so we're just going to jump straight into 1.8. As you can see, we've made a few changes to the build, with the addition of some larger stained glass windows on the side of the building. You might also have noticed that we've got the ability to use shaders in this version. Next, I plot out an outcropping to begin extending this mansion into more of a castle. First, by introducing a singular tower and connecting it up to the balcony of the main building. I bring the design around the building further, adding much more detail to the crenellations. I also choose to add some thin, rectangular stained glass windows to incorporate a pop of colour against the grey stone. To finish the 1.8 upgrade, I edit the sandy terrain and turn it into something more fitting. Jumping in where we previously left off, I began adding further layers to kick off the 1.9 upgrade. I map out a base section for the castle to sit on, lining it with crenellations. I then start working on the grand entrance to the castle, building it into the cliff and taking some design inspiration from Dark Souls. I chose to feature a more boxy, traditional design for the entrance to contrast the fantasy-esque concept that I have going with the main building. End rods were added in this version of Minecraft, so I decided to use them to create spires and add further details to the castle. In this clip, they emit quite a lot of light due to the shaders, but you'll notice this is much more subtle from the next clip onwards. Now, we're in 1.10 and I move the building into the sky to allow for more capacity to build. I copy the entrance section to the east and west sides of the building, making a few alterations to the design as I do so. I start working on a smaller outcropping with some more refined details, copy and pasting it to the other side. Since we have access to the bone blocks for the first time in this version, I decided I wanted to create an undead skeleton dragon gripping onto the side of the castle. For the body shape of this dragon, I use the dragon from Gringotts in Harry Potter as my reference, with some obvious adjustments to make it appear more skeleton-like. I include end rods and quartz slabs and stairs to refine the shape, and then start mapping out the skeletal structure for the wings. BSL shaders don't really complement this version of the game. For some reason, the bone blocks emit a slight glow, which will change in the upcoming clips. To finish up the dragon and our 1.10 upgrade, I add some flesh and some muscle fibers to give it a little life. 1.11 didn't offer any major new blocks, so we're jumping right into our 1.12 upgrade. So I began changing the roof from dark oak wood to gray concrete blocks and replaced the balcony flooring with the same dark oak. Copying the top section of the tower we previously made, I add several smaller towers along the lower tier of the castle. Finalizing the entrance, I create the beginnings of a bridge and copy the same design to the side entrance of the castle that will lead to a different part of the build. To fill in the dead space where I extended the height of the castle's base, I decided to make a gothic church-like building protruding from the wall. I add some more stained glass windows before swapping the two protruding buildings around as I wasn't happy with the previous layout and wanted a more tiered effect to the castle. I felt that the taller building fitted better up top and made adjustments to the shorter building so that it's flush with the walls and the whole thing looks like a complete unit. There were some new blocks added in 1.13, but I skipped ahead as the replay mod isn't supported in that version. So instead, I incorporate both 1.13 and 1.14 upgrades in one hit. As you can see from the surrounding landscape, as we progress through the upgrades, Minecraft's terrain generation caused any unloaded chunks to change, leaving us with a square, unrealistic plot of land to work with. So to fix this, and to lead into the 1.13 aquatic update, I do some major terrain editing and transform the landscape into islands in the middle of an ocean. To make things look more natural and organic, I blend everything into the existing surrounding landscape using sand to create an ocean floor. In the previous clip, I started building out the side bridge that would lead to a second island, which I add here. Out the front, I also build an island for the main entrance to connect onto, which includes a winding path down the rocky cliff face down to sea level. To finish up, I re-added the water into the ocean. With the ocean mapped out, I introduced some 1.13 additions, including seagrass, kelp and coral to create a reef around the islands. 
Making some final changes to the castle design, I copied the bridge design that I previously made to the main entrance of the castle, providing a section of land for the bridge to connect up to. On the island connected to the side entrance, I copy the initial tower design from the main castle and make alterations to it to make a standalone tower embedded in the rocky island it sits upon. Finally, I move the building that was previously a stable to sea level and convert it into a dock, adding a few small fishing boats and making some design alterations to match that of the main castle. 1.15 was the bees update which didn't really provide me with any new blocks that I could feature in this build. So we move on to the final and latest update of the game, which is 1.16. This new version provides us with a bunch of new darker stone variants, which fit perfectly with this build. So I make some alterations to the castle by swapping out some existing materials for new blocks. The nether update provides some perfect materials for creating dragons. So I thought I would experiment and make a second dragon flying around the castle. I begin mapping out the body and wings using blue wool which I tweaked until I was happy with the composition. I continued by filling in between the skeletal wing structure and started to experiment by converting the wool into the new blocks. Since we've made a dragon out of the new warped nether blocks, it seems only fit to upgrade the existing bone dragon to incorporate the new crimson nether blocks. This was a much shorter process as all I had to do was replace the existing blocks and flesh out the design to move away from the skeletal concept we had before and make it resemble more of a conventional dragon. Finally, I add more to the main bridge, but create a collapse section, perhaps broken by the dragon, to add some story behind the build. I build the bridge design down into the rocky pillars below and place the broken section of the bridge into the ocean as well, surrounding it with debris and rubble. I connect the side bridge up and move the whole island and its tower closer to the main castle. And with that, the final upgrade is complete. Right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this little transformation video throughout the ages of Minecraft. Now, this video took a lot of effort and a lot of time. So, if you want to get the download for yourself, then you're going to have to get this video to 60k likes. If you get it to 60k likes, then I'll upload it to Patreon and you can check the build out for yourself. I have to admit, I didn't think it would have been as fiddly a process as it actually was <laughs> when planning to do this in the first place. If I'd have known, honestly, I might not have followed through with it. Also, we only have a few weeks left of the Trixie Blocks merch. So, if you want to get your hands on this or the hat or even the face mask then go down to the link in the description and check out the store like i said there's only a few weeks left so cop it while you can because once it's gone it's gone it's not going to come back again and we finally got some pictures of us actually wearing it as well so you can get an idea of what it actually looks like on the face that's also all over on the store so go check it out leave a like if you enjoyed the video and you want to get this build for yourself and aside from that i'll see you in the next video Thank you.